Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I am so thrilled today to speak with Steve Saparito, who is a business coach, really a business mentor for a variety of photographers. Whether you're a portrait photographer, a wedding photographer, it doesn't really matter. He, he works with you and coaches you into making it into a more successful business. And so uh, Steve is located in Melbourne, Australia. It's very early in the morning, and I've, I've managed to, to corner him and say, hey, let's talk a little, about, a little bit about the business of photography, which is an exciting topic for us all because, hey, if you're not in business, it's a hobby, right? So uh, Steve, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. This is so worth getting up so early for. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Let's make it worthwhile for everybody. Um, yeah, cool. I, I, think, I think you and I uh, really connected uh, thanks to Josh and, and his, his group uh, th through the Beloved Movement. And yes. since then, I've, I've, I've gotten to know uh, you and Kelly and the kinds of things that you do for photographers. Uh, what would you say typically you help photographers do best? Or better. Well, I think it's it's more about allowing them to find themselves and find confidence in their business to then create be, be more creative with um, working with clients and and discovering more about clients and allow them to take the focus off themselves and put the focus back on serving our clients and creating. A huge, I suppose, change within our clients. Right. Um, this isn't about, for me, it's not about selling photos. It's about allowing people to transform their lives and and get back to um, get back to feeling again. Because I think you know, as a society, we and this seems to be quite evident in Australia, and it seems to be very similar in America, mm -hmm. whereby we become so desensitized to everything um, that most of us are walking around not feeling most of the time. So I think photography, for me, provides an excuse to allow people time to stop and just um, think about what's important to them and rediscover themselves and rediscover their families and rediscover um, their relationships through photography. So photography really is a medium right. through, which, through which we can help people um, transform their relationships, not only with the people that they love, but with themselves. Interesting. So you're saying it's not only for the photographer to experience this, but also for the clients that they serve to experience this, right? Ab absolutely. And I... Uh, it, folk, it's so much easier to focus on somebody else um, to get your own transformation because it's so hard to look at yourself a lot of the time, isn't it's very it? Very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so we're really using our clients, I suppose, to transform ourselves and, and transform our own lives. Um, so uh, when people are, are working with their clients, they see a lot of sort of things that, that relate to their own lives. And I think it's a it's we both get a, a great benefit out of it um, there's because no doubt we, about that yeah there's yeah. no doubt about that you know even and it comes down to even my photographing families for instance when I see mm -hmm. a, an experience a family and photograph them and in, in their own loving way that they're exp you know really interacting with each other it yeah. fuels my sensibilities and my way of experiencing my families I'd rather I'd like to have those same sort of feelings with my own kids and my own wife and all this stuff, right? Um, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And I think if we can, if we, I think my mission is to take the ceiling off mm -hmm. insofar as this is how far we're allowed to go with clients. This is how, this is how deep we're allowed to go because this is my comfort level, which is all about you <laughs> because it's so about true. your comfort level. It's not about um, where a client needs to go. Um, in order to have their transformation. So I think once people have a little bit of, uh, I suppose, experience with what's available, then they desire what we need, um, what that, they, they desire what we give them so much that they're happy to invest, you know, and it's common for the photographers that I train to experience average sales of four or $5,000 purely because of the... Uh, the value that they're giving back their clients in that they're reconnecting, 
they are finding um, their families again and being reminded of what's really, really important. It's almost like they've paid for a European vacation, which a lot of people do, um, to get away <laughs> and reconnect, except at five grand or ten thousand dollars even, right. um, it's so much cheaper to go on this holiday um, and and have a, and have their two three week holiday because really, yeah, for a portrait experience, that experience that we have with our clients averages about two weeks from the time that they call us to the time that they they come into the into our business. Um, well, they've come in from the from from that from that moment that they call us. But the time of the shoot and then the the premiere um, is around about that two week two week period. For a wedding, you know, it's a lot longer. You know, it's not uncommon for it to be a year. The, I think the thing with wedding photographers is that we take the booking and then nothing happens for a really long time. But uh, I believe that we should be uh, connecting with with the bride and the groom and the families of the bride and the groom um, throughout that experience and really providing the service and I read even this morning as I got up you know there was messages flashing everywhere you know about pricing and what I should price and what should what should I include in my packages but very rarely, rarely do people talk about increasing the value of of what they of what we're giving most people perceive that the value of what they're giving is by um, adding another frame of something or adding another, um, or adding another, uh, you know, digital Im a lot of digital images or something like that sure. to throw in. But nobody's really talking about um, how they can improve uh, their communication and improve the quality of the experience for the client. I think we need to get away from believing that clients are here to buy photos. They're not here to buy photos. They're here for a a transformational experience, not a, a good experience because I make them feel good. People these days, I think, are looking for someone to help them transform some part of their life. Um, and it's, can, can, it's you give a, can, you a, can you give us a good example of that? Like, give us an example of perhaps where a photographer has transformed somebody's life. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me pick from the, the smorgasbord. Um, okay. So we had uh, a single mother who um, called and wanted to book a, a portrait session for her and her children. Um, she had a, an 18-year-old son and a 16-year-old daughter um, and had spent her whole life working as a nurse. So she was working shift work. And um, she didn't have, really have time, but we... We made, sh we made sure that we, we made the time to talk to her and was available for when, when she was available. Um, and we asked if we could speak to her son and daughter because we wanted to get a, a feel or, or a look at, you know, what their experience is and, and what her, you know, what the relationship was like looking at it from their end because you can't look at something one dimensional like their 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 opinion of who she is and and what she is to them is very different to hers mm -hmm. um and through this experience it was the first time ever that she realized that they saw her because she always put them first and as far as she was concerned all she did was work provide for the family and um and provide for the home, but was never a real person. And because we, we took the time to speak to both her children and they were allowed for the first time to be heard about, and this is the issue, a lot of people struggle with hearing, um, hearing anything about themselves because we've blocked it so much. So for the first time ever, she'd heard how much they loved her and how much um, what she's doing um, meant to them and this woman's in tears because she never allowed herself to hear it or see it mm. so uh, it, it brought that family closer together it raised their, their awareness of each other because we took the time to find out and we became the mediator between, okay. um, between the children and her because she 
wouldn't hear it from them. And and it's the same, you know, when you get married, it's the same thing, you know, sometimes you really try to, you know, you're trying to communicate, but for some reason, you're speaking different languages. And yet, um, you know, people outside can see things that you're trying to communicate, yet the person you're speaking with just can't hear it. So we can become that, that mediator. Um, and so that, that family's enriched. And it went from, you know, I, I want a photo done, um, can you provide can you provide images on a disc to oh my god this is amazing and you know I want to capture this uh, and I think she spent three and a half thousand dollars which you know is great for somebody that um, you know is really stretching herself to do that absolutely absolutely because she is a single mother they live in a small flat um, it, and it's not about how much they spend. It's totally about the value that they're getting. Um, and then, you know, we re- it's about, you know, people valuing what we do and, and us creating value for the, for the client. So that's, I suppose, a small example. Okay, that's great. Uh, the question to you then, uh, Steve, is how do you show that value? How do you convince them, persuade them that there is that value in, in whatever experience you're going to give them? I mean, let's say... Uh, someone comes uh, referred to me uh, and yeah. says, "Hey, Seishu is a great photographer. You know, mm-hmm. you, you gotta love his pictures. I've seen him on Facebook or whatever. You know, I'll see, check out his website, right? Whatever." Yeah. Uh, but that's sort of on the very s- s- sort of shallow end of things. I would love to see how someone will perhaps talk about me and and how they've experienced the photo shoot and be yeah. able to narrate that to somebody else who says i want that kind of an experience right how do you go yeah. from this level below right down below here to this level here you know which is considerably higher up in in the scale of things <laughs> well i think it starts with you you know you used um some terms like convincing people or pushing people or um or persuading people i think you've got to just not do that at all. I think it comes from your belief. Uh, I think it's got to start with your belief in people that there is something more to them than they see. And as an artist, um, for me, an artist needs to see something that everybody else sees differently. Um, That we need to see, as artists, the same object but in a completely different way, and um, and in doing in doing that, um, your belief in people and you know what's good about people, and usually the hardest people um, are supposed to find that um, that magic with tend to be the ones that have the most emotion because it's buried so deep inside. So it starts with a belief in you. That's um, awesome. and, and I, I think that everything is, uh, comes down to intent. So if your intent is to push people and persuade people, then it's going to be a very hard trail. And it's going to be um, a trail of we, all we want is your wallet. And you, the, that, type of, that type of sort of approach is all about how can I get to your wallet Show me your credit card. Right. Um, you know, is it a black Amex? Is it a what type of Amex do you have? Whereas, um, if you're going at it f- with the intention of really helping these people and finding out and believing that there's something magical about them, and you're going to be relentless in finding that out for them, then the whole journey changes. Um, it, it, for me, it's all about intent. Um, and if your intent is t- to provide something for somebody, then it will never come off as um, as pushy or as um, right. or salesy. Because um, honestly, how can you quote somebody or how can you provide an end product until you know uh, the substance of what you're working with to start with? So it's about finding out who these people are providing all of that value for them, allowing them um, the space to, to rediscover each other or rediscover something ab- about themselves 
and without your limitations, without your fears, without your own um, judgments, and allowing them, you know, just to be to be free of all, of all of because that's what they've had their whole life. You know, our teachers are telling us what to do. Our mums are telling us what to do. Um, everybody's got an opinion on how how we should be running our lives, and so like it or not, we adapt to all of that and we set limitations on ourselves. I was so, going to say, uh, limitations are baggage, emotional baggage, right? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of baggage. Yeah. So, and uh, and we, are, we, are their, we are their therapy, really. <laughs> In some ways, we are. I, I, you know, I, I completely get it. Uh, you have uh, a new website, a new program called Intuition to Succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about Intuition to succeed. Which, oh, by the way, I love the the domain name. I mean, it's such a cool. <laughs> and you think about it, it, it makes complete sense to me that you know uh, that success, business success, should be intuitive. It should come uh, naturally, without yeah. without any any sort of uh, objections or reluctance from from yourself. And uh, I'm so glad you've you've started this program. Tell us a little bit about it, please. Well, the, brand, the intuition to its succeed name, I've got to give all credit to Kelly. That was her sort of, she, she says, oh, this is what I want to call it. And it oh, was so, um, it was so uh, perfect for what we're trying to do. Um, so the whole name comes from the belief, you know, and if we, we are true to ourselves in what we believe for our clients, then we need to believe the same about the photographers that, we cha- that we're training is that they already, I think a lot of coaches um, or, or business um, business teachers um, are coming from a place where uh, the students are broken and that if you, if you use my magic pill or press the magic button, then all will be healed and all will be fixed. Um, whereas we believe that um, there is, you already have everything you need. And, and, and it's true. Most people has, have every resource that they need already inside of them. They just don't know how to access it yet and they don't know how to use it yet. So for us, it's about fine tuning what people already have. So I've spent a, quite a lot of years of one-on-one mentoring and um, every single person I've worked with had what they needed, but we needed to modify um, what we, how we taught it. So then that way it was palatable for them and we needed to modify it for their personality type because we all have different personality types. And it's about finding the right way to communicate to that person and for us, for me as a, as a coach, to accept responsibility for their outcomes. So, in, 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 so to sort of say what you've just said, do you handhold people in terms of making it happen for them or is it more of a, uh, more of a group situation, a group approach um a bit of both i think because the community that we've set up in c3 um does a lot of hand holding and there's the, it true. allows people allows people access to us um and if you look at the threads and i know you're part of part of it if you look at the oh, threads yeah. um i people ask the same question in in they think it's a different question but a lot of the times it's it's the same but they're not seeing it because of their own blocks so the way I answer will be de- will be dependent upon um, what I'm feeling their personality type is and the wording that they're using, um, whether I believe, you know, w- whether, you know, this person is a dove, for instance, and I teach the bird personalities through it, then I need to speak dove to that person. I need to make it okay for them to feel good about what they're doing because doves are caring pe- people. So if I explain it in a way that they're... Um, helping other people and that they are um, really nurturing other people, then they will understand it more than if I'm talking to, you know, um, an eagle which, you know, thrives on stress. So, um, you know, depending upon who it is, and it gives them that one, um, that that hand-holding as well in a group situation. And I think everybody can learn from somebody else as well in the group situation. Um, obviously, you know there are different levels in the membership, and the diamonds get get handheld. Mm-hmm. They basically get a call every every fortnight. Sorry, every other week for you Americans, we call it fortnight, but every other week. So um, it's it it depends on I suppose what level they're at. Um, 
but the group situation it seems to be really working really, really well and there's a lot of people getting um, lots of breakthroughs with their clients and it's, it's not about the money. Um, the money comes, yes, and people are earning a lot more than they ever have before. We've got lots of people that are earning their annual incomes within you know, a few weeks. Um, but you know, it's, it's got to be about the client. It's got to be about finding um, something you can provide for them. Indeed. That is, first of all, Steve, uh, so refreshing to hear uh, because I think for the most part, uh, and I, I'm going to just generalize, a lot of other business coaches are really teaching people uh, X plus Y equals Z kind of thing. And you're, you're, it's not a formula that you're teaching. You're teaching, you're not, you're, you're, you're really about uh, resetting the mindset in people yeah. uh, in, in a great in a great in a great way you know in a way that's positive and, uh, and that can affect the the lives of other people um and to go back to the the facebook uh, group by the way uh, mm -hmm. i have to say you, you know i have read your responses and yes you do res respond in, in a different way uh, perhaps to the same question and uh that's greatly appreciated because it shows how much patience you and Kelly have for all of us. <laughs> to with you. It's just it's like it's mind blowing. Um, lastly, you're coming to Connecticut, where I live, and I yes. can't wait to meet yes. with you. Um, <laughs> and and, th and this is this is a, a true honor for uh, for me because you know I've I've followed your work, I've I've listened to you on online, and now I get to meet with you and and have a. Uh, an, act, an actual workshop for for three days. I don't know. Are you calling it a workshop? Is that what you're calling it? Well, yeah, it's a workshop. Because yeah, um, you're gonna be, put us to work, right? You're gonna you are going to be stretched. Um, I did one in in Phoenix only a few weeks ago, and um, working in that sort of environment allows me to really use a lot of my training as an NLP practitioner to help people break through their barriers. And there will be what tears. Is NLP? Neuro neurolinguistic programming. Gotcha. Okay. So I've done a lot of sort of study in in, in that field, and it, it really does help me uh, see the blocks that people have and break through them. So there will be tears. There will be a lot of emotion. Um, but it comes back down to that whole X plus Y does not equal whatever it is because I can I can teach you – the, I can teach you what to say and I can, and I can give you the lines, but it's the way it's delivered. And I think a lot, of peop a lot of the times we create our own traps with clients and, and if I haven't had that transformation with you and your belief about um, your own skills and, and what you're providing to people hasn't changed, then you're always going to face the same issues with clients. So rather than pa patching you up with, you know, band-aids, um, if we can have those breakthroughs, then you will never have to face those issues again. And that's where I'm coming from. Um, rather than teaching you the lines, the right thing to say when this objection comes up or that objection right. comes up, right. how about let's not have objections? <laughs> because in most cases, we've created them. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of the times, no, well, most all of my clients are recording their calls and, and sending them to, to me for, for critiquing. And in almost every case, whatever the client's heard is not what the client, whatever the photographer has heard is not what the client's actually said. Mm. So it's our interpretation of what the client said. And we are manifesting a lot of the objections. Um, not in every case, because, you know, some clients, they just don't know any better. You know, they, they don't know what to ask and we're not helping them in a lot of cases. So it's about starting from the start and, and, and the workshop's really looking at, um, at going through that process and, and helping, helping fixing, well, not fixing anything, but, you know, looking at those blocks, making you face them and, um, and creating the space for you to work with. Excellent. That workshop is going to be February 20th, 21st and 22nd. And uh, it's going to be probably yes. somewhere between Hartford and New Haven. Uh, we'll figure that out. And I'll post a, a link to it. Uh, awesome. Steve, thank you so much for an amazing, amazing discussion about <laughs> what you do, how you do it, why you do it. I think that's more important than anything else. Um, yeah. I, think, I think people are going to really get uh, a lot out of uh, 
this this little interview and hopefully we'll sign up with uh with you as well for intuition to succeed thank you so much awesome thank you so much Sashi. thank you take care bye-bye okay bye <laughs>